Hello, dear Carmelians. Today is the feast day of Santa Teresa of Avila. Join us as we journey with Santa Teresa of Avila today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, by your Spirit, you raised up our mother, Saint Teresa of Jesus, to show your church the way to perfection. May her inspired teaching awaken in us a longing for true holiness. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Teresa was born in a small village called Avila in Spain. Her father, Alonso Sanchez de Cepeda, was a successful wool merchant and one of the wealthiest men in Avila. He was first married to Catalina del Peso e Inau, with whom he had two children. In 1509, four years after his first wife Catalina died, Alonso got married again, this time to Doña Beatriz de Ahumada y Cuevas, who on March 28, 1515, gave birth to a daughter and future saint, Teresa de Ahumada. Teresa's mother brought her up as a dedicated Christian, fascinated by accounts of the lives of the saints. As a little girl, Teresa and her brother Rodrigo loved to read the books of the lives of the saints and martyrs. Hey Rodrigo, do you know it's quite easy for saints and martyrs to enter heaven? What? It's true. A normal person will have to lead a holy life for years to enter heaven. But for saints and martyrs, it's very easy. Is it true? It's true. Look at the lives of many of the saints. Yeah, what you're saying is correct. Hey, I have an idea. What is it? Do you want to go to heaven? Heaven? Yes, I do. Hush, don't talk so loud. Matyo, you mean getting killed? Yes, Rodrigo. Do you want to go to heaven? Yes, I do. Then do as I say. When Teresa was at the age of seven, she and her brother Rodrigo set up secretly to go to the land of the Moors. As they walked along, they prayed that they might die for Christ. But before they could get far, their uncle found them. Teresa! Teresa! Stop there! Huh? Who is it? Oh my God! It's our uncle! doing up here? We were going to the moors to get... We were going to see the moors, uncle. What? Alone? Are you mad? Now come with me. I'll take you home. Oh. Teresa's mother used to read a lot of books on fashion and beauty. One day, Teresa happened to see one of the books in which women were dressed in lovely clothes. Teresa was dazzled by it all. It seemed so attractive to her to be able to look pleasant and to feel loved by everyone. As she grew up, she started imitating those women in the magazine. She no longer craved for God, but she now loved to look at herself in the mirror. When Teresa was 11 years old, her mother died and that rattled her family all together. Teresa cried inconsolably. She had lost her mother, and in her grief, she prostrated herself at the foot of Our Lady of Grace. Teresa grew into a charming teenager. She had a complete attention wherever she went. By the time she was 15, she was beautiful, witty, fond of clothes, jewelry, and perfumes. She had a habit of reading romantic novels with knights and fairies. One of her older cousins came to live with them for a few days, and she was fond of gossip and vanity. This older cousin influenced Teresa, and Teresa now set a town of buzz with her gossips. This caused her father sleepless nights. Teresa's father decided that adult supervision was required for Teresa. Teresa was admitted to an Augustinian convent nearby. This place was like a finishing school where young women were taught social skills in things like cooking and embroidery. 
this period brought a change in Teresa and she started enjoying her life at the convent. She found a good friend and a novice mistress who taught her piety and goodness. Tell me, sister, you are so beautiful. Haven't you received any proposals from young men? My dear child, my heart, it belongs only to our Lord. So inspiring. This good companionship removed all the bad habits that Teresa had. Teresa slowly recovered her faith in the Lord. She started thinking about becoming a nun. By the influence of her devout uncle Peter, along with her reading of the letters of St. Jerome, Teresa was convinced that the surest way for salvation was to forsake marriage and other worldly pleasures. She decided to join the Carmelite order against the will of her father. But not long after she joined the order, she became very ill. She was brought home for treatment. She experienced severe pain and physical paralysis for almost two years. She was even expected to die when she went into a coma for four days. But she somehow recovered a little bit and insisted on returning to the monastery even though she remained in a painful and debilitated state. But Teresa, why so soon? You can't stay here for a few more weeks. And as you are better, I will take you to the monastery myself. No, Father. Uh, you don't understand. I have to go. During the next three years, Teresa made remarkable progress in her spiritual life. Through the intercession of Saint Joseph, she miraculously recovered her health. As her health returned, she lapsed more and more into routine prayer life. Beginning at the age of 39, Teresa began to have vivid experiences of God's love. One day, while she was praying, the Lord revealed Himself to her, only showing His hands. Oh Lord, thank you! Thank you so much! A few days later, Teresa saw a divine face. And then, on another day, Teresa saw the resurrected body of our Lord Jesus Christ. The vision was accompanied by a light so majestic that it could not be compared with others. Her continued prayers led to mystical experiences like the transfiguration of her heart. One day in her dreams, an angel appeared to her holding a long spear. The tip of the spear was glowing with fire. The angel pierced her heart several times, and when he drew the spear out, Teresa experienced a great change in her heart. She was now filled with great love for God. Teresa's work of reform began with herself. She was troubled by the worldly pleasures such as wealth and beauty. She was also disturbed by the steady stream of visitors to the convent's parlor. Such things distracted her from her prayer and kept her from God. She then decided to follow the Carmelite rule as perfectly as she could. But the prevailing atmosphere at the convent didn't help her. Mother Superior, I want to tell you something. What is it, sister? Mother, I find the atmosphere here very disturbing. And I'm not able to concentrate properly during prayers. I, I think our order has lost its way. What are you trying to say, sister? Are you saying that we are not following our rules properly? I think the order has become too lapsed in practicing our rules. Huh? How dare you? I'm sorry, Mother Superior, but I'm going to leave this order. Leave this order? What are you going to do then? I have decided to start a new convent. A convent that will return to the basics of the contemplative order. A convent where we will lead a 
simple life of poverty and prayers. Mm. And are you going to do all this by yourself? No mother, few other sisters here share my point of view as well. They will accompany me in building this new order. Alright, whatever difference we may have, I wish you all the very best. God bless you my child. Thank you mother. Teresa started the first monastery, St. Joseph, in February 1562, along with four other novices. Together with her friend, St. John of the Cross, she founded what is known today as the Order of the Discalz Carmelites. Discalz means barefoot, symbolizing the simplicity to which they chose to return the order after a period of corruption. Teresa and John traveled far and wide to open more than 30 monasteries across the world. Teresa's health failed for the last time while she was traveling to Salamanca in 1582. She accepted her illness as God's chosen means of calling her to His kingdom. Lord and my spouse, the desired hour is now come, the hour is at last come, then I shall pass out of this exile, and my soul shall enjoy your company, what it has so earnestly so longed for. St. Teresa died on the 15th of October, 1582. She was canonized on March 22, 1622, along with three greatest contemporaries, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Francis Xavier, and St. Philip Neri. In 1970, Pope Paul VI proclaimed St. Teresa as one of the first two women doctors of the Church, along with the 14th century Dominican, St. Catherine of Siena. Her symbol is a heart, an arrow, and a book, and her feast is celebrated every year on October 15, the anniversary of her entrance to eternity. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. God has given our mother Saint Teresa to the Church to guide us on the way of prayer and recollection. May you be counted no longer servants but friends. The Lord has made her a teacher of loving self-sacrifice. May you also live generously in His service. God has made her model of fraternal charity. May you also be filled with love for your brothers and sisters. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.